welcome to Ignite, Light Up Your Life. I'm your host, Lacey, and today I'm going to have a very special guest, and we are going to talk about three ways to remain resilient in a crisis. Before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, ding that bell for updates, share with your friends, and give me a thumbs up below. I am your host, Lacey, and today I am here with a very special guest, my mom, Michelle. Hi. Hi there. And we are going to be talking about three ways that you can be resilient in a crisis. I picked my mom today because she is the person that taught me to be so resilient and I have been through many things and this is her story of resiliency and how to, how to bounce back with grace. So I'm going to let her tell her story and I hope that you can listen and gather notes and learn to be more resilient. Hi everybody, I'm happy to be here. Um, life can be super painful and can make zero sense and it's really important to be resilient in life and to have, um, no matter what happens, to have an I will survive mindset. Like um, I had all these different events earlier that happened in my life, everything from my husband of 27 years together, um, having an a six-month affair to my brother getting can my brother dying, uh, my husband uh, being diagnosed with cancer. Uh, let's see, we put down two dogs, family issues. All these things happened at once, like within a two-year two-year window. And my metaphor for it was like um, there we have this be we have this beautiful mirror that was hanging in our um, entryway of our of our beautiful home and. It was, it was there for so many years, like it was a beautiful, beautiful mirror. And I remember one day um, my ex-husband came in, and this is, sounds really weird, but he closed the door and that mirror just fell off the wall and shattered. And I thought that I was like, I, I, that was just the weirdest thing to me, but in my mind that was my life is that mirror that had been stabilized on that wall for so long. It was a beautiful mirror. I looked in it every day and it fell off the wall and shattered with all those life events, with the, um, all of those, you know, the, the affair, the, and then I went through a divorce too at the end of that. So I needed to circle around and, and tell you that, but how I got through that shattered, all those, you know, my mirror being shattered was I, I decided that when I found out that I'm going to survive, I told myself, I will not, yes, I'm laying down and I'm upset. And I feel like my world has just been totally and completely just shattered like a mirror. But I told myself, I'm not, I will not, I will survive. I will be okay. Um, I will not lay down. In my head, I was like, I'm going to be okay. And I had to keep telling myself this day in and day out. And when it was really rough, I would have to coach myself and say, I will be okay. And during that time, the I will survive um, attitude, I'm never going to lay down. My daily routines were super critical. Getting good sleep, eating healthy, moving, sunshine, uh, going to work, talking to my family and friends, having things that I knew that I could count on. Making, getting up, making my bed every day, doing the things that I knew that I could have control over and that would give me a sense of control and peace and that I would be okay. The third thing, uh, the first two things is I will survive. The second was my daily routines. And the third things were, the third thing was picking out things every day that gave me joy and that helped ease life's pain. Like using all your five senses, things like um, a green smoothie, my dog. I love my dog. If it wasn't for my dog throwing that, through that period, I don't know what I would have done. She loved me when I couldn't love myself. And I felt like my world was beyond. So she kind of helped ground me and take me to a place that I that I would be okay. So I held on to her. Um, walking, hot coffee, yoga. I work at I work at a place where we help two-legged and four-legged people. I mean, we're all two-legged, but I mean, I help, we help critters. I work with agriculture, so. Um, music helped me. Um, something else that really helped was downsizing. A lot of my material goods, because we had a lot of things. 
a lot of material goods that were fantastic. We had a wonderful life. The thing that I missed the most out of all this was my lifestyle. Yes, I missed him, but at the same time, I missed my lifestyle. I missed who I was. That mirror that fell off, that fell to the ground and shattered, I kept picking those pieces up and they would make me bleed. It would hurt to look back. It would hurt to... I, I, when I looked at my situation, I felt sorry for myself. It's like, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> and I would, like I am... <laughs> I don't like to show my underbelly, so this is kind of hard for me. But when I would get to those places, I would make sure to take extra special care of myself. I would sleep longer. I would. Uh, I like to be quiet and by myself sometimes, so I would take really good care of myself. I'd take longer walks. I would do things that I know would make me feel okay. A warm bath. I would be around people who were okay to me, where I felt safe and not like I had to be something or, or I could show them my vulnerabilities because in life I don't do that well. I'm a front light. I'm, 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 I am not, I don't show my underbelly or my weakness as well and, and, and for various reasons because of my personality and things. But in order to survive, I, um, all of those tragic and, and very, very difficult things Resiliency is huge. Um, being able to um, tell yourself and coach yourself through times of, of you don't have control over these life events. Things that, it's a singed hairball. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, how do I figure this out? I'm a why person and always trying to put the pieces together. Like, how does it fit and, and, and analyze it? But these things, life's painful events, don't make sense and when your mirror shattered and you keep picking up those shard glasses and they, they cut you and you bleed and you keep it hurts and it's hard to it sometimes it's hard to get out of that but in order for you to be okay and for you to be okay and for your loved ones and family and friends to not be worried about you you have you have to coach yourself and tell yourself that you have you have to be your own best friend and your own coach you have to be your own safe place to fall no one else is going to do it for you there's not going to be some man or some woman or some whatever come along and save you it's important to know that you're your best ally and that you have your own you know what you need for your mental health you know what you need for your physical health all of these things you really know down deep but it's a matter of honoring those and being able to walk that out and, and do it in a way that you can heal from your grief and, and that you can move forth instead of staying stuck. Like I, I think about this kite in the tree that I, well, I was walking this morning and I saw this kite in a tree and it was stuck in the tree and it wasn't doing its purpose. The kite wasn't it wasn't a kite anymore. It was stuck in the tree. And so with this kite I don't want to be that kite. I need to move forth, even though I've been wounded. I feel like I've been like the walking dead, my heart. I'm not the same. Somebody, you know, I'm not the same, but it doesn't matter. What the point is, is how can I use my, just my struggle, which I don't want to show anybody, but <laughs> it was showing anyway. I was trying to hide everything from my coworkers but it all showed but when i said to them this is what's going on and i am in they could see that i was on the ground but i was trying to hide it but how i got through this was just those three things i will survive attitude my daily routine was critical and picking out things every day using my five senses that help keep me grounded and mindful about where i'm at today i'm not future tripping like i normally was because I was on the ground. I was not able to do anything but just survive. And if I wouldn't have take care of, taken care of myself in this way, I don't think I would I, I don't think I would be okay today. I might not even be here. This has a way of taking you to places you never want to go. But what's important is life is very painful. How you deal with this pain, how you how you take lemons and make lemonade, for lack of better words, is 
sorry, key <laughs> to um, key to helping yourself and helping those around you because staying in this doesn't work. And there's certain things you can do, but that's what I found for myself. And I'm a, like I said, I, I'm, <laughs> I always don't think I'm type A, but I am. And I'm, I'm learning to just learn how to take care of myself and grieve and heal and move forth and not do the same, not create pain for other people, not continue on the six cycles or the things that have harmed me. But if I'm not aware of them, if I'm not consciously taking care of myself, then, then I don't know where the rest of it is because I'm my best friend. I'm my soft place to fall. And when I take care of myself, then I can have other people feel safe and like they're okay too. But when I'm not, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know where I would be and I don't know how I, I've had lots of support too. I've had lots of good family, friends. I've had a therapist. I've got EMDR, um, EMDR therapy. I've got, I've done all kinds of things. Yoga, I do all kinds of things to get better and to heal. But sometimes life is super painful and you just find little ways in life to ease your pain, to take care of yourself and honor, honor what you need. I'm not a crier. It sounds weird. I don't. I, I want to erase all this because I'm crying. <laughs> but we're not going to. <laughs> we're probably not going to I know. because <laughs> this is. I mean, this is reality. Yeah. And I'm. I'm an older lady, and I'm. I was wondering. She doesn't like cry ever. What's gonna happen to me because of all this? Nothing is. I'm okay. I'm fine, and I'll take care of myself. I'm my best friend, I can take care of myself, and I can do things that I know that I need to have creature comforts and to heal up. And I don't need to stay in a place, excuse me, where I am where I am the kite in the tree. I have a purpose in this world. Lacey relies on me, my family, my friend, lots of people rely on me. And I rely on myself, and I want to have a good quality of life. I want to be happy and whole and healed. I want to grieve and I want to be okay. I don't want to, I, I, everyone wants to be okay. So how do we do that? We take care of ourselves. You know, we, we talk to ourselves in ways that are healthy and that are helpful. And we honor what we know we need. When I'm feeling upset, I, I try to barricade myself from people so that I can work it out. And so I can be okay around them because otherwise it's all over. And finding an anchor, like like anchoring yourself in your routine is really important. Very much. That has been the one thing that has gotten me through all of my crisis. And we're here to help guide you. And we, we hope that you can find your own best friend within yourself and learn to be resilient and find that vulnerability and use it to your advantage rather than using it as a weakness or an excuse to continue living in misery. Um, so, do you have anything else you would like to share? No, just be gentle with yourself, and you know what you need. Yes, you. No one else knows. People think they know what you need. You know what you need, and honor that, and walk that out. Walk it out, and and be true to yourself in a healthy, decent way, in a healthy, balanced way that helps the world be a better place. Because my mission in life is to help and not hurt. And so, and I'm not very good at it. And bring value to the world and bring value yeah. to your family. And what, you know, if, if you can only look inside yourself and see what pain you have and only look at what you're having, look outside and see everyone else is feeling that same pain too. So maybe go help someone instead when you're feeling like that. You don't want to wallow in your own pain. And so, if we all help each other, then this world can, you know, heal. And we're trying to break those generational curses. So thank you for being on the show, and I'm really happy to have <laughs> you here. <laughs> thank you for crying with us. Um, and and this is this is the essence of this show is just being really real about things and just kind of like letting it all out and getting through <laughs> it and showing the lighter end of things because we all have these crises and we all need to find ways to get through the dark and so it's good to have a support system and it's good to be your own best friend and it's good to have an anchor and you know and to have people that really understand and that you can have a safe place to fall 
with that, I I will say goodbye, and we will thank my mother, who will be back thank to you. teach us some um, other stuff. tips, money stuff. My mom is a, a money guru. She's the money, M Michelle knows money. So we're going to come back with some videos and teach you how to uh, be well with your finances. And, and um, yeah, so that'll be great. Thanks for coming. Be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Have a great day. I'll see you next week.